Yo, what's happening, my people? So, I'm honored to bring you this one right here. This one's gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna try to <laughs> keep it together. Shit, I just finished watching this movie. Shit, you probably could tell. Shit, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna be emotional and shit. Cause, uh, like some of my heroes in life, like Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X, that's two brothers. I wasn't alive in their lifetimes or anything. I wasn't able to see them in their primes doing their thing or whatever. Like, uh, Muhammad Ali, he was alive in my lifetime or something, but he wasn't, like, active and handling up his business and stuff. Like, all that was done by the time I hit Earth. Malcolm X was long dead. But, man, these brothers, they just were inspirations just in my lifetime, just reading up on them, looking at what they left behind and stuff. This movie is One Night in Miami. So, on the night of February 25th, 1964 in Miami, Cassius Clay joins Jim Brown, Sam Cooke, and Malcolm X, and they discuss the responsibility of being successful black men during the Civil Rights Movement. So that is the synopsis of the movie. This is a Regina King film. So you see Regina King, she's been in the film industry for a long time, way since 227, uh, Poetic Justice, to recently Watchmen, like, she's been doing her thing. She is off chain. Very, very much a fan of this this uh, lady. And to see this, her first film, and she chose the right one to tell the, to tell the story. She has chosen the right script and stuff. This one was beautifully done. And this is a story about these, these young men in their lifetimes. It is a poignant, a poignant time in their lifetimes where she cashes clay. He's a, about to convert to uh to becoming a Muslim, to becoming Malcolm X. He's winning winning the uh the heavyweight championship and the roles that Malcolm X plays in that part of his life. Malcolm X, he has been kind of pushed out of the the Muslim the, the black Muslim party and stuff in with, with Elijah Muhammad and them. So he's on the fence. Of what is he gonna do with his life? And he's trying to recruit uh Cassius Clay to kind of be a maybe a, a something something for his next move is as, as far as like starting his own organization stuff. Jim Brown leading the league in rushing, uh handling his business, playing playing football, but he might embark on his, his film career. So he's at that time in his life. Sam Cooke, he's doing his stuff. He's trying to impress these white people at the Copacabana and all this. But will his music come come across and will he uh become more soulful with, with his stuff? Like, you think of Sam Cooke and you like, a change gonna come and stuff. You're like, oh, he been soulful and stuff, man. So, but he, it wasn't always like that. Like, he was kind of appeasing to a crowd, like, just love, 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 lovey-dovey, and just, that was was catering, trying to cater to that crowd back in that time and stuff. But the, the story of this, it's like, it's not the the biggest thing in the world. Like, it, the, the whole story is pretty much, almost the whole movie, at least 80% is them in this hotel room. And they're having these conversations, these tough conversations. But these are some of the most powerful brothers that have ever touched the planet Earth. And these brothers, friends, together, going at one another. Like, we see Malcolm X, like, he just always has the answer to everything. He, he knows everything. Like, that brother is wise beyond his... And at times in this film, like he's he seems a little lost. And people are calling him out on a lot of his actions. Like Jim Brown and them, like he's going through things. Cassius Clay is on the fence about things, man. Like we see Sam Cook, like Malcolm X is talking down on Sam Cook about some things because he's like, you can be the most powerful out of all of love us. Because you have this voice. And this voice can lead people. But you're not leading anybody to nothing. Because you just chasing these white people trying to appease them. But then on the other hand, Sam Cooke is in this movie and he's like, okay, so you, you really think that, like, I'm not doing anything for my community and stuff. 
But what you don't know behind the scenes is I got so much business stuff going on. Like the 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 key to freedom is like economic freedom and stuff. And things that I'm doing, like, yeah, I might do this song or whatever, but you know, I own the masters to my songs. I own all the rights. So we sold these songs to these white folks and they were number one. But we get paid for them. Like, so it's it's a it's a, a crazy dichotomy of things going on. Like who who is has the right vision in or who's going the wrong path or whatever. It's not necessarily any right or wrong, but it's just different perspectives of things and them getting through to one another about things in their lives and stuff. And like you just seeing seeing things like their their friendship, how deep it is. You see like this point in history. You see like Malcolm X and he sees people like following him and he sees people stabbing him in the back and he has that that shadow of death on his shoulder. Like he just it's kind of like Tupac in his end days and like how he was always rapping about death or something. And like he kind of senses something, something coming. And it's, it's a beautiful story. It's very emotional, man. Like to me, it was like towards the end, whenever, whenever Malcolm X in, in Cassius Clay, when they butt heads and then, like like reporters come, it's not a big spoiler or anything, but reporters come to the hotel and stuff. They find out where he's at, so they want to get words from him. And the first person he wants by his side is Malcolm X. And he had just tried to, <laughs> I don't want to tell everything, but it, that was the emotional part. And Sam Cooke, seeing his awakening, his awakening on here and him becoming more conscious and stuff, man, uh, this is a beautiful film, man. Regina King, Queen, a hey, much props to you. I know I'm not always the most poetic in the, everything on here. I, I freestyle and I just come from the heart. I just say what I remember of the movie and what I can put out there. Like I don't, I don't have a script or a teleprompter or anything. So if I stumble or fall, I can't find the words. Hey, I'm a country brother from Louisiana. But if you did watch this. I thank you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. And before I finish this off, like y'all, y'all watching, y'all want to know, man, I give, I give this movie a ten. I give this movie a ten. It's, it's not a big action movie. It's not blockbusterish or something. Look, if you have any affinity for any of these brothers, if any of them or somebody that you looked up to or anything, you will love this film. If you don't care for these brothers, if you like, I don't like Jim Brown, or I don't know what he did, I don't, I'm not a fan of Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali or something, you might not like this film if you, you're just not into to deep things or whatever. But this, this movie is very important, man. And the things is crazy because what year I said, it, it was like 1964 or something, uh, something like that. And way back in those days, they are having these discussions about black people and about what we are going through and this and that. That shit is still going on in society today. We see things. Why do you think everybody was so mad at about the people storming the Capitol or whatever? Because we know if we do anything like that, they have the Black, black Lives Matter movement and stuff, and we're trying to get equal rights. It's trying, it's that civil rights time. And we still having the same fights today. And still getting kicked in our ass when other people get to do whatever the fuck they want. With no, no kind of backlash or anything. It's, it's backlash, but that's not the word I'm looking for. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to get too, too emotional in that side. But just to see the mirror of what they were fighting, fighting for at that time. And to see that we still going through a lot of those things right now. That's crazy. That's crazy. But this is this beautiful film. Beautiful film, man. I give it a 10. I give it a 10. Me personally. But, uh, yeah. That's my thoughts. Peace.